Hey YouTube, today we're talking about something that I think is going to be one of the most important long-winded topics on this channel because it is so important for my goals and for the spirit of this community as a whole and we're discussing the natural limit. So as far as this goes, it's a topic that is extremely complex that is extremely controversial and lots of people have opinions about it. So I personally perceive that there might be other videos about the topic. What I want to achieve with this video is to give you my full thoughts, to put everything on the table so that you know where I stand, so that when I tell you something about it, you know exactly what I mean. And so that I can send people to this video if they tell me that they think the natural limit exists, because as you might have understood by this point, I don't. So if you have questions, I highly encourage you to write this video and write down the questions because there's a chance I'm going to answer it within this same segment. But if I get enough interesting counter arguments or opinions, I'm going to make a second video about the natural limit where I give you my opinion on your counterpoints. So we're going to start right now. I have my list. So as far as the natural limit, I'm going to start by defining the limitations of it, what it is and what it isn't, because I'm going to be arguing a point and I need to make sure that you get that point. So first off, for me, what the natural limit isn't, the natural limit isn't a biological limitation set in your DNA that dictates that at some point you won't grow anymore. To me, this is not a defendable opinion because there are too many variables that can come into play to change an individual's limitations, to change an individual's ability to handle volume, intensity, and overall, anything that implies that there is like a, 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 something that is going to stop you from growing within your genetics, one, cannot be proven by science, has never been proven by science as a hard fact, there are certain factors of it and two doesn't make sense from a logical standpoint. So I'm not going to argue against that because that would be too easy. That would be a straw man. It would be picking the easy choice and saying, oh, look at how stupid that is. That's not interesting. What I'm going to be talking about is what I consider the actual logical application of what the natural limit would be. And that would be that at some point, you're going to reach a certain threshold where your body will become extremely resistant towards adding muscle, where strength is going to plateau, size is going to plateau, and you're going to end up in limbo, meaning that you're going to progress a little bit, regress a little bit, potentially get injured. And all in all, this is going to constitute a point where progression is going to be so minimal and so potentially losable that it doesn't really constitute progression anymore. That to me is what people call the natural limit. And that's what I'm arguing today. So let's start. I want first to discuss the different applications of the natural limit, depending on individuals, because you'll see that short lifters, people who are lesser in height are going to reach what they consider a limit much faster. Why? Because their potential for size wasn't super high to begin with. So that's important to keep in mind. Your natural limit, depending on if you're tall or short, might be completely different. And why is that important? It's important because if you abide by the standards of a man who is 5'6", and you're 6'7", you will never reach one-tenth of his size. Why? Because what took him enough volume intensity tonnage work to get to his limit would barely get you through one tenth of your potential. That's a very important thing to keep in mind because you will see that outliers, especially very tall men, represent what I consider to be the final frontier. They represent the unknown. We don't know how big these guys can get because we have so few examples of men who are natural who made it at this size. So that's an important thing to keep in mind that within the natural limit exists portions of shadow, things we haven't explored yet, because anyone who approaches the natural limit as being something established, proven by science, 
and that doesn't need more discussion is wrong. As far as tall lifters, I also explained that for you guys, if you're like me or taller, sky is the limit, literally, meaning that you're going to be discovering new things because you are a pioneer. No one has done it. Look at bodybuilders, even pro bodybuilders who take tons, to take tons of hormones. Even these guys tend to not be super tall, meaning that there is a, a general sense of discouragement for tall lifters to get big because it's so long. But if it's so long and progress occurs, wouldn't that mean that the natural limit is pushed back for tall lifters? Wouldn't that mean that there's no natural limit for tall lifters? Keep these questions in mind because they're valid. Two, gifted lifters reach it late. I've often discussed what I consider to be someone who's gifted, what people call someone who's genetically gifted. To me, not only do they start higher than most people, they also go higher as well, but they go higher for longer. I've seen that with my own eyes. I've seen guys who had bad genetics like me and who worked for six, seven months on the, on the linear program and then stored and they couldn't progress past it with a linear program, it was not possible. And then I've seen guys who were on a linear program, the most minimalistic of programs, who made constant strength gains for three years. Those are gifted people, why? Because the amount of stimulus and variations of volume and intensity they need to progress is minimal. And these guys are the guys who are going to progress the longest. So as I explained with the short and the tall guy, if the short guy is going to have this much to do, to reach a limit where his body starts to stall, uh, someone who's gifted is going to have much more of a range. And that's also when you enter the discussions where people talk about what is natural, what is not natural. Usually it, it's, it becomes tough to de decipher because since those guys have so much range for progression, they exist within portions of strength and size that normal people don't really understand because they represent something, a standard that doesn't exist. But I'm going to start talking about it more and more because that standard uh, notion is very important. And after that, I also want to say one thing. Uh, the, the natural, I, I saw a video recently by, uh, by a guy who said that he could get anyone to their dream body in two months. And that made me realize also why people talk about a natural limit is because it's not possible to reach your dream body in two months naturally not doable it's in, it's just it's not going it's not going to happen the issue is these people by promoting that type of impossible standards are going to feed into the mindset of you are going to rush towards a, a, an impossible standard and when you reach it that's a limit but it doesn't take into account the fact that real natural bodybuilding takes years that's a different situation, it's a different topic, but I'm also going to get back to that. PED use has really hurt the natural limit perception because natural standards are in the crapper. I also want to say that training needs to be optimal. That's, an, that's something that I might make a video about. A lot of people ask me if I started training optimally at first. And the answer is, of course I didn't because no one does. You cannot train optimally at first. You have to make your mistakes first and your environment might not allow you to have the best training equipment as well. So for me, when we're discussing the natural limit, we're also discussing the fact that the people who claim to be at their natural limit should be training optimally. And for the most part, they don't. I had literal conversations with people who are telling me, oh, I'm at my natty limit and I can't potentially go higher. And I said, okay, show me your program. And they're like, what program? So that's one red flag. Or they would say, I would say, how's your volume and intensity? And they're like, what? What is, what is volume? What? I'm like, so you don't even know what programming is, but you reached a limit. Not possible. So that's another thing that personally makes me fail and say that there's no natural limit because you cannot be done learning about this. It's not possible. You can have some of the variables under control. You'll never have them all under control and certainly not within two months. Even if you pay or if you do your research, you're always going to have to learn more because it has to apply to your body. So that's another thing that sort of shadows the natural limit. What limits this? The physicality might be up there. It might be your mental. You're just not smart enough. You don't know how to train. 
What stops is progression, not the training's ability to stimulate growth. Keep that in mind. That's an important uh, uh, sentence because it's the crux of my argumentation. People who stall tend to blame the stimulus. They say the stimulus is doing nothing for me anymore. Not true. If the stimulus was changed, it would promote growth. Right? You cannot conflate the two. Just because you stop growing doesn't mean that your muscles don't respond anymore and they won't grow. It might just be that you're not training them appropriately. And it, it sounds stupid, but a lot of people discuss the natural limit in those terms where they say, nothing I do can change it. Like I, I've heard people say, nothing I do can make my calves grow. I'm going to strap you to a 45 pound plate, make you do calf raises and negatives until your calves burst, then I'm going to make you stretch them on the step and we'll see if they don't grow. Of course they'll grow. It's just that people don't give the muscles the stimulus they need and then they don't get results. Surprise. I also want to add to that that um, the type of people who say that tend to be beginners. And when I see, I see guys who've trained for two years and who tell me that they're done, it makes me lose my marbles. How is that possible that I've seen guys who bench 180 at 180 body weight who say, I'm done, that's my limit. This also goes to show one thing. The type of people who tend to talk about the natural limit are people who aren't even there yet, meaning that they're not even close to what would constitute a natural limit, not even remotely close, right? So question yourself, if these are the people who promote the notion of natural limit, what does it say about the notion in itself? Another important point in terms of discussing the nature of the limit is it's chronological, it's not numerical. Meaning what? Meaning that what is going to trigger that natural limit is going to be most of the time time, most of the time time, and the limiting factor of your evolution is also going to be time because what you end up finding, as I just discussed, is that those people who say they, made their, they met their limit, they could still be growing, but they don't. Why? Because it requires more stimulus. And at some point in your training, if your strength is stagnating, how do you get more stimulus? More volume, more frequency, which means what? More time in the gym, chronological. And what do these people want? Not train. They don't want to train more. So that's their limit. It's not numerical. It's not that they can't do more volume or intensity, their body would adapt to it and grow, it's that they don't want to invest the time. And that's fine, but that doesn't constitute a limit. It doesn't work like that. It's the equivalent of a guy who is in front of a door and the door would take four hours to open. And he tells you, that you cannot open that door, it's not possible. Well, it's possible, it takes four hours, but the fact that you're not willing to invest the four hours to open it doesn't mean that it cannot be opened. That's an intellectual fallacy. It's just not proper reasoning. And just to get back to what I just said, uh, you also realize that there are limits that are going to be assigned to things that appear fairly subjective. Meaning that I've never heard anyone say, oh, the natural limit for bench is 130 pounds. Never heard that. But I have heard people say, you can't possibly bench 400 pounds if you're natural. It's just not doable. I personally don't agree. And also, those are purely subjective standards. Those are the same standards that you, when you lift, are putting in your head that limit you and create plateaus because you've idolized the three plate bench. And when you get to it, suddenly you don't progress anymore and you say, oh, it's my Nelly limit. How plausible is it that Everyone's natty limit is 315. It's not statistically not possible. It's just that collectively, we all have that standard in mind. And when we reach it, we convince ourselves we cannot go past. Limitations start up there. And if you're a prisoner of your own mind, trust me, your body will not grow. There's a technical point. Did you hear that? Um, as far as someone died, as far as the gen genetic limit goes, we're also going to talk about hormonal profile, evolution and correction. So that is something that people ignore as well when it comes to the natural limit. Because a lot of people will tell you test is the most important thing. 
Test is what makes muscle grow. I personally don't agree with that to start with because test can be uncorrelated with tonnage and accumulation of volume in the muscles and the workload in general, meaning that if you took two people and they both have the same test levels, okay, and you have them do the same exercise routine, one of them would get bigger, they have the same test levels. So what does it tell you? Training makes you, training makes you bigger. Of course, having a very advantageous hormonal profile is very important. My personal theory about the subject is that even if you start with medium tests, as you train, your body is going to become more anabolic because you're subjecting it to an environment that requires it to become anabolic. And that encapsulates a lot of things. I've made a video about it. But to me, natural lifters are going to become more and more test heavy as they grow. To me, that makes total sense. And if you completely refuse to accept that, it's tough to argue against the natural limit. Because if, if the natural limit is stipulated by your hormonal profile, but the hormonal profile continues to evolve, well, then there's no natural limit. Or if your hormonal profile is getting impaired by your body composition, you're too fat or you're too, you're, you don't have enough fat, you don't produce enough hormones and you recomp while you just broke through the natural limit. So there was no natural limit to begin with. I also discussed the fact uh, in another video that no one trains for 10 years and that uh, is that pretty much completely destroys the idea of a natural limit because an argument I hear a lot against people like me who claim that you are going to keep evolving until you're like in your 40s and even further, for, uh, further after that if you are actually maintaining and healthy as a male, what these people say is, oh, once you reach a certain amount of hard work, in terms of years, there's no point in going forth. There's no point in going forward. But what do they base that on? They base that on off of the pool of people who train for three or four years seriously and then enter the chronology, chronological blocker aspect that I described and they stop training. So of course they don't have much gain to show for. They stopped pushing because we, all, we have almost no examples of natural lifters who train for 10 years. And when I say train for 10 years, it doesn't mean you started when you were 18 and now you're 28. It's the day you started with a rigorous program that you made for yourself. So you were intermediate advanced and you kept doing that for 10 years uninterrupted. No breaks, no six months to go do. I don't know what in Hawaii. You kept training. The thing is, we live life. We're not robots. We're not paid to train. So a lot of people are not going to do that. They're going to prioritize family or money and they don't represent a correct assessment of what a natural limit would be for natural lifters because they have not put in enough work to actually be correct assessments. And that's if you consider that 10 years is the limit. Some people will tell you 20 years is. I don't know yet because I personally have started training actually seriously around three years ago. So I'm not even close to 10 years training. And I'm looking like this. So we'll see. I mean, this channel is about that. If I stop evolving and I, I cover every single programming aspect I can and I cannot evolve, then there'll be a natural limit. But my goal is to show that there's no such thing. Natural limit promotes PDUs. That's, the, that's a very important part of my argument. It's something that I really want to get out there. You see, the issue with the natural limit is that what does it say to lifters? What, are it, what does it say to young men? It's telling young men, you're going to eventually meet a wall. And the only way to go past that wall is going to inject steroids. That's already bad enough. Now, understand also that that wall is slowly creeping forward with each year. All right. It used to be 10 years. 10, oh, do 10 years of real training and then you'll do your first cycle. Now it's eight, seven, six. And now I hear people say, oh, after two years, do your first cycle or else it's all for nothing. That is garbage, okay? It's going to kill so many people. It's not even remotely close to the truth. And the issue is that it's promoted on both sides of the spectrum by people who are small, who don't put in the work, who don't know how to train, and they say, I don't get gains. It must be because I'm natty. And people who juice, because guess what? When you juice, you have to justify your choice because you know that you're destroying your health. You know that you're hurting yourself. You know that your family is going to have to deal with the consequences. You know that it's costly. So how do you justify that? 
oh, if I didn't do it, I wouldn't progress anymore. It's as simple as that, but it's really hurting people. And as I wrote here, I don't know what I wrote, so I'm going to move on because my handwriting is terrible. I want to discuss promoting the Nadi limit as being something that doesn't exist, which I do. If you think about it in terms of motivation and just general well-being for people, what do people who promote the natural limit do? They promote hopelessness, they promote PDUs, they promote giving up, they promote not researching, not trying to understand programming, not trying to understand your own body and mind. What do people like me promote? I promote never-ending progress, I promote positivity, I promote never giving up, I promote trusting in yourself, I promote not letting yourself limit your own abilities through your mind. So at this point, which one do you want to pick? Because it's really simple, which one do you want to pick? And I'm going to get into the advantages and disadvantages of both because you might think, oh, well, let's just believe that there's no Nelly limit because it clearly sounds better. Not necessarily, because you'll see there are quite a few advantages when it comes to believing in a natural limit. And I think that it comes next. YouTubers, right? The, the window, the guys who are supposed to show you what you can accomplish or not. First off, this is just dog crap. Do not base someone else's progress and try and match it with yours. It makes no sense. For example, for me, if you see me and you think, oh, okay, I'm going to match my strength standards on him. Please don't do that. I'm a weakling. You might have a lot more potential for strength. Don't let someone else define your standards. Make up your own standards. But that's just, that has nothing to do with it, but I just wanted to say it. So, why do so many YouTubers talk about the natural limit? Isn't that strange? Shouldn't they be the people to, you know, try and promote promotion, promote progression, try and show you the way, show you that there's no, there's no end. And you might think to yourself, well, it's because they trained hard and they met the limit, so they want to dampen the blow. They want to make me feel better about it. I say that that's nonsense. I say that all of these guys who talk about the natural limit, they've all done the same thing. They started YouTube because they had a passion for lifting, eventually made money out of it and decided that making money was more important than lifting. So they decided to do what? Maintain. How many examples of that on the internet? Of guys who've looked the same for five years. What are they doing? They're maintaining. Because they might still look good. When someone clicks on the video, they, they are still jacked. So why would they keep progressing? They're making that sweet money off of this. They, would want, to, they don't want to kill them, kill themselves in the gym. They don't want to have to program for three months. They just want to rack in the bills, look good, and that's it. But see, there's an issue in what I just said. Because how do you sell that to your audience? If you're supposed to be Mr. Fitness, Mr. Bodybuilding, Mr. Muscles, how do you explain the fact you haven't looked different in five years, you've made no progress? The natural limit. How convenient. Oh, it's because there is a limit. You see, it's not me being lazy and not putting in the work. It's there is a limit. That's where it started. That's, that's the type of guys who promoted that. And now it's infiltrated the minds of the entirety of the YouTube fitness community. And it's hurting people because people are limiting themselves. So it's something I'll never do on this channel. If I, I can tell you right now, if I fail, if I fail, if I spend a year in a plateau, I'll pick up the camera and I'll say, I'm a failure. There's no natural limit. I'm just a failure. I must be doing something wrong because to me, human potential is infinite. So you can expect that. But <clears throat> that's what I believe on that topic. After that, I also want to talk about doing PEDs to push the limits. Because as I said, a lot of young guys are going to buy into the rhetoric of my hero who does PEDs said that it was because he couldn't potentially promote and progress naturally, so he, he did drugs. So I'm going to do drugs. But a lot of them rationalize and they say, oh, I'll, I'll do drugs to push the natural limit and then I'll come back and I'll stop. What happens to these guys? It doesn't work. Why? Because you're using drugs that are going to artificially inflate your hormonal profile, hurt your natural hormonal profile in the process, make you more muscular than you would than you were supposed to be, and then you're going to come off of them. So what is going to happen? You went past what you perceive as a limit that doesn't exist, 
then you regress here. So you think that now because you went past it, it's broken. So you see that mindset? That mindset tells me one thing. The limit never existed in the first place. It was just that those people needed the incentive of drugs to show them that it was possible so that they could do something in three months that should have taken six years. But in three months, it was much easier because it was just doing this and not actually getting the work done. All of that to show the illusion that is the net limit that to me, as I explained, is in people's mind. And that's important. Why? Because the natural limit is a cultural standard. It's not biological. Go to, I don't know, a country that doesn't really have a fitness influence. Look at the average size. If I went into one of these countries, people would tell me I do drugs. When I go back to France, people approach me asking if I'm natural. And they, they just refuse to believe that I'm natural. And yet, if I come in the US and I go to a gym, I'm a big guy, but no one is doubting the ability of getting to that size naturally because of the cultural differences. A country, if tomorrow there was a country on earth where every single man trained hard from the age of 16, guarantee you that the natural standards would be through the roof. You know what that means? That that natural limit, do, it does this. It, it's, it's extremely flexible. All right. It, it has an ability to move because it's in people's mind. And I truly think that we are going to find that the natural limit is going to be pushed back in the next years that are going to come. Because I think that as far as people train, if they stay natural, they're going to accomplish a lot. I truly believe, and that's not just me being fake humble. I'm not super impressed by my physique. I'm, I'm proud of it, but I can see so much more. I guarantee you that so much more can be accomplished and you're going to see it in the, the next years. So it's not going to really destroy the natural limit. It's going to push it back, which in a sense is going to destroy it because it's going to make people realize that it's not set in stone. We're almost done <coughs> and I have no voice left. I just want to quickly talk about the concept of natural limit when applied to life, because you never really hear that outside. Like, have you ever heard someone say, oh, you're going to read, but there's a natural limit to how fast you can read. Or you're going to learn languages. Oh, there's a, there's a cap. You're going to learn four languages and then your brain is going to be like, no, I'm done. That should ring a bell already. It should show you that it's the physicality aspect of bodybuilding that is making people say that. But then if you apply that to other sports, is there a point in tennis where you won't progress anymore? Is there a point in, I don't know, running where you will not improve your time anymore? I've never heard anyone argue that. So why is bodybuilding any different? Why? Because it's muscles, it's, it's, it's muscles. Well, because it's a stupid sport, so it must have a stupid limit. It doesn't make sense. Apply it to everything you know in life and it doesn't make sense. The existence of that hardcore limit. And we're going to finish with two things. First off, and it's something that I said at first, but I just want to uh, reiterate that genetic gifts. So if you're genetically gifted, they make you go higher, faster, but that ability to go higher, faster does not limit other people. And that's so important. As I said, do not base your standards on other people because you might go way past them or you won't. But in both cases, it's going to hurt you because it's either going to limit you or it's going to hurt your feelings because you won't be able to make it. And for that, I want to talk about, for example, people who might watch this channel who have insane strength standards and who have a potential for strength that is super high or the opposite. I'm going to explain why it hurts you in both cases to try and relate you to someone else. Either you're going to be that kid who's super strong. You're going to get a two plate of red press. Then you're going to look down on your shoulders and say, I don't get it. My shoulders are small. And this guy, he, he presses one plate, but he has big shoulders. So what does that kid, what does it do to that kid? That kid is going to think there's no point in pushing forward. I met my natural limit for the shoulders. No, because that kid had the potential and strength to push the stimulus for the shoulders enough to gain the size, but he never did it. And on the flip side, you're going to have guys who might look at that from a different perspective and think, oh, so that guy has legs, 30, 26 inches legs and he squats this, but I don't squat it. And I, I don't think I ever will. 
so why not just give up now? In any way, all of that is going to be detrimental. There is no positive point in believing in the natural limit. None. It's pure limitation across the board. And as I said, again, someone's ability to go here doesn't mean that you shouldn't try to go here. I see so many people say that, oh, I have bad genetics, why even try? Because it's your life and you sort of want to try and not die in the side of, on the side of the road. Who cares if someone is going to get much bigger than you faster? It's his body. Your body is not going to be influenced by the way he looks. Make your own difference. And we're finishing with this. Evolution will push the standards, meaning that as a community, it's our job to push the standards. And I'm not going to say it's going to take two weeks, okay? Especially if you're a novice, you're going to showcase insane physics, but it's going to take time. It took me 10 years to get that. So patience is going to also play a role. And I think that the immediacy and the inability of people to project themselves in the future is the reason why people talk about the natural limit. Because if you think in cycles, blocks, six weeks, six weeks program, of course, there's a natural limit because in six weeks, you'll still be at the same point with a m m minor m margin of difference. But if you can project yourself in three years, five years, you think you won't look different in three years. So if you look different in three years, there's no natural limit. And I'm going to finish with this. First, I personally would rather believe that there is no limit because it pushes me forward. But also, in this chronological thing, as I explained, I subscribe to the idea that you get to a point where the gains slow down. But they slow down. They don't stop. You see the difference? It's the equivalent between a car which doesn't move and a car that goes at one mile per hour. If you keep driving that car, the car who goes one mile per hour will get you far. All right. But if you believe it's not moving because it's not going fast enough, oh, you won't get anywhere because you'll be off of that car. See the correlation here. So I personally encourage to take that car. It will be a little bit crowded. There's a little bit more people on this channel, but we'll go far. And in five years, you'll look back and think, wow, that thing that I thought was a natural limit wasn't even there in the first place. And that is going to be an evolution that is going to be permanent until you hit the age where your body is going to potentially start, you know, falling apart a bit. You're not going to produce as much test. But if you're on this channel, you're so far away from this. This is going to happen in your 50s and 60s. And there are examples of men who still make it. You can worry about that then. You're in your 20s. Focus about now. Focus about the next two. The next 20 years are going to spend training. And I'm going to leave you with that because this video is already way too long. Let me know in the comments what you think. We're going to discuss that natural limit a lot more. But if you want an answer from me, you better have good arguments and you better make sure I haven't already debunked them in this video. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.